I'm Arthur Goldstuck and I am at the Africa Tech Festival in Cape Town where I have the privilege of having a chat with Dr. Sunil Pierlal who is an executive at OpenServe. OpenServe of course is a subsidiary of Telcom and presides over this massive fibre grid across South Africa. Sunil, tell us a little more about the scale of this grid. I've always been astonished that it reaches into every little town in this country. Good afternoon, Arthur, and thank you for having me. Uh, so OpenServe has uh, in excess of 180,000 kilometers of fiber in South Africa. And maybe to put that into perspective, you can take that fiber and wrap it around the planet just over four times. Wow. That is the amount of fiber we have in South Africa. So, so that is the extent of the fiber. And more importantly, that fiber runs across the entire country. So we cover every single municipality in the country. We, we cover all towns. So we have a presence with fiber uh, across the country. And what is the strategic objective of uh, having this massive grid in terms of how it supports telecoms broader role, but also in terms of how you see OpenServe exploiting it in the coming years? So at, at OpenServe, we believe that when South Africa connects, South Africa grows. So our intention is to try and connect as many communities as possible, to connect as many people as possible, to connect as many businesses as possible. So from a strategic perspective, we want to reach out, uh, we want to have digital inclusion, we want to we try and reach out further than just the metropolitans and, and connect the small businesses. Uh, we, we, we target uh, areas where we can have a huge social impact, areas where we can have a, a huge economic impact in South Africa. You wrote an article in Gadget recently where you spoke about how smart cities and high-speed fiber are the backbone of sustainability for South Africa's future. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're talking about here? Is that the um, idea behind having such a robust network? So, so fiber forms the very fabric, uh, the very foundation for connectivity. And in South Africa, we look for high-speed, low-latency connectivity for smart cities. So when we talk smart cities, we want to start introducing things like license plate recognition, facial recognition, the ability to control robots, and, and take smart cities into smart homes. You know, start making your home a smart home, and, and you need very high speed, very low latency connectivity. And I focus on low latency because you don't want to find that you're sitting in America and you want to open your gate and it, it opens and you don't know if it's open or not. So, so we have a very high focus on good quality broadband connectivity in South Africa. It almost sounds like you're preparing for the future of autonomous vehicles as well. When you talk about the low latency and controlling the robots mm. and the like, is that part of the vision? Very, very interesting. Uh, about two months ago, I had the opportunity to actually travel in an autonomous vehicle. And it was an amazing experience. And I think from a technology perspective, South Africa is ready. Uh, I think if you look at the fiber, fiber network operators, the amount of fiber we have in South Africa, fiber is the technology you're going to need to provide the, the network autonomy. And I think that the fiber will be the backbone. You will have wireless 5G networks that, uh, that will drive uh, autonomous vehicles. But uh, network autonomy is just as important. And uh, in OpenServe, we've built intelligence in our network to be able to detect where we, can, where we have faults. For example, we have intelligence in our, uh, in our network equipment uh, that, that monitors our fiber. And it can pinpoint exactly where our fiber break is. We have fiber sensing technologies that actually give us an idea of what is happening over the fiber. For example, if you have fiber on a railway bridge, it learns after a while that a train causes a certain amount of vibration, that cars cause a certain amount of vibration. But when someone is digging with a pick and shovel, that changes the, the frequencies that run on that fiber, and that helps us to monitor and detect. And that is how we're bringing artificial intelligence and machine learning into our network. That's fascinating. Can you tell us a little more about what that makes possible right now in terms of the applications that can sit on top of that um, intelligence? So, so I think from a monitoring and network security perspective, uh, we, we, being an incumbent, we have a lot of copper in our network, very similar to other major incumbents across the world. And one of the problems is that copper is a precious metal. Mm. And when people start digging for copper, they don't know that there is a fiber cable or a copper cable and they damage our cable. And you damage a fiber cable, you take down thousands of customers at a time. Mm -hmm. And fortunately at OpenServe, we have 100% resilience in our network. So we build a network that we have a failover route with 50% of that capacity spare to fail over. So when people cut our fiber thinking it's copper, we have the ability to fail over our network onto a separate route. Also fascinating. It's almost uh, an untold secret of what lies beneath our feet. 
-hmm. and something that we are depending on now but we're going to depend on even more in the future? I, I think so. Uh, what we do is we, we deploy fiber and we call it future proof because we can change. That is our passive network in other mm -hmm. words. We deploy the fiber and we continuously reuse it. Uh, the end equipment we change. For example, in and about 2010, we started rolling out fiber to the home. Mm. The common technology is GPON, or mm. Gigabit Passive Optical Networks. And at about 2018, we started evolving to XGSPON, X being the Roman numeral for 10. So that is 10 gigabits per second symmetrical network. And uh, in, in and about September last year, at SATNAC, we tested 50 gigabits per second on our network, meaning that I can take 50 gigabits per second to your home. And interestingly, we tested that in the middle of the Kruger National Park, where you would think there's very little connectivity. So that demonstrates the expanse of our fiber network, which you spoke about earlier, and the extent to which we can take fiber to any part of the country. Uh, it just depends on the costs, it depends on the scales, and it depends on the economies of scale. I want some of that 50 gig per second <laughs> connectivity. <laughs> when is it going to be feasible for the public or businesses to actually get access to that kind of technology? So, so Arthur, I think what's important is you ask yourself, why do you need it? Mm, so mm, if you want to watch a high definition TV, you can get away with about 40 megabits per mm. second, 50 megabits per second. So what it boils down to is actually human impatience. So gigabit connectivity, you know, we speak of giga cities and OpenServe just received a giga city award yesterday for Johannesburg. So what it means is that you have gigabit connectivity. And if you want to watch, you know, social media and uh, Netflix streaming and, and other forms of video streaming consume a lot of bandwidth. So if you want to watch a movie and you want to download it, you want to download it in seconds. And that is where your speed comes into, uh, your speed plays a role. Because mm -hmm. you can watch a normal movie, it'll take you long to download it, but you don't want to wait that time. So that's where you start asking for one gigabit per second. And then you mm -hmm. start moving and say, that's not enough. I mean, when I started off in the late 90s, I had a 64 kilobit per second line at home, and I thought that was fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> and now suddenly one gigabit per second is not enough. So it boils down to, to really human impatience. I have to say, until I had a 400 meg per second a fiber line to my home, I was never satisfied. Uh -huh. But finally, it seems to have caught up to our needs. Mm -hmm. But what evolving needs are going to demand those greater speeds? So, so I think if you look at a lot of applications coming through, uh, you're going to see a lot of change in the way we are used to seeing connectivity. Previously, we were used to asymmetrical connectivity. In other words, you mm -hmm. might have a 400 megabits per second downstream and about a 200 megabits per second upstream. With applications like TikTok and other social media applications, we're starting to see people requiring more mm -hmm. uplink capability, mm -hmm. more capability to fast and very quickly upload mm -hmm. uh, content and symmetrical connectivity is becoming a norm, very high speed symmetrical connectivity. And I wouldn't be surprised in the very near, near future if we start seeing asymmetric but the opposite, a higher uplink connectivity mm -hmm. and lower uh, downlink, uh, download abilities. So As we all become content creators. Content creators, number one, and number two, if you start looking at, uh, I, I almost foresee you not owning a smartphone in five years from now. Mm -hmm. I mean, right now, I don't think there's a anyone that doesn't own a smartphone, but you're going to start seeing wearables taking over. Mm, mm. You know, you're going to flick your hands and mm. through your glasses start changing, uh, phoning people. So, so that is becoming a reality. You've got uh, smart rings that monitor your mm. health, mm. smart watches that monitor your health. So wearables is becoming the next, uh, the next big drive and, mm. and you want mm. everything connected and everything connected very quickly. Mm. Mm. So AI built into your earbuds, for example, yeah. um, that use bone conduction and mm -hmm. Um, perhaps linked to a ring on your finger is all you're going to really need to be able to conduct most smartphone functions. Absolutely. Uh, but t tell us a little more about the GigaCity con uh, concept. So there's, there's a, so Giga, GigaCity refers to gigabit connectivity in a city and the World Broadband Association started measuring, they have a GigaCity index and they go across different cities in the world and they look at uh, ranking you in terms of GigaCity. So Yesterday there was an award for Giga City in Africa and OpenServe took the award for South Africa uh, having the Giga City connectivity in Johannesburg. Kenya took the award for progressing towards Giga City connectivity in one of the cities in Kenya. So Giga City refers to your ability to connect at gigabits per second in, in a city and using that for various smart applications. Can it overcome potholes? We hope very soon you would have a smart device that can fix potholes, yes. <laughs> You've already got a device that cleans your home. You've got smart vacuum cleaners. Right. But I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, you know, I was recently traveling in China and we saw in the evenings 
robots just come out mm. and sweep the street and clean the streets. So yeah. I don't think something, you know, we may joke about it today that something will fix the potholes automatically in the future. But I wouldn't put that, uh, mm. I, I would still keep that thought and think that's a possibility, yes. I think we all look forward to that day <laughs> in South Africa. Yeah. But uh, let's just get back to another word that you uh, used a couple of times, uh, which I think is one of the keys to high-speed broadband mm -hmm. and, and the Giga City for that matter, and that is uh, latency. Yeah. Because I think uh, people that underestimate the impact of mm -hmm. latency, the negative impact when you have um, very um, high latency mm -hmm. and the positive impact when you have low latency. Can you talk us through how your uh, network architecture mm -hmm. uh, supports having very low latency? Yeah, so, so we have very, we spend, and I don't want to quote figures, but we spend a lot of money every year upgrading our equipment. And we ensure that the equipment we have at the end of our fibers is, is always uh, state of the art, world class and cutting edge. And built in with that is the latency. So we, we run a three tier network. We have an access network, we have an aggregation network, and we have a core network. And our, uh, our IP core runs on an optical transport network. And that helps us reduce the latency. Yeah. And when you start looking at latency and you look at where it's important, if you look at how online gaming has kicked mm. off, you know, uh, and, and that is probably the biggest requirement mm. apart from streaming for, for lower latency. Right. And uh, how do you expect it to evolve in the future? I think, I think we're at a point where you can, you can do most of what you want to do with the latency we have in our network. But, but going forward, I cannot see a bigger demand for lower latency. Uh, from a technology perspective or from a media perspective, Fiber does give you the lowest latency, but we're seeing an evolution of uh, wireless technologies as well. You know, uh, quite acceptable latencies from 5.5 5 and, and 6G networks. It's uh, funny, a few years ago, we wouldn't have thought that the uh, issue of uh, slow connectivity would potentially go away. Mm -hmm. But where it's still a massive bottleneck is when you look at public Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. Is your uh, network geared towards supporting hotel Wi-Fi, for example, and conference center Wi-Fi more yeah. effectively than we have today? Yeah, that is such an interesting conversation, Arthur, because you know a lot of people don't know fiber to the home. They don't know mm. fiber. When you have guests come home, the first thing they ask you for is your Wi-Fi password. Mm -hmm. They don't tell you, they don't ask you, do you have fiber? Yeah. So, so Wi-Fi is viewed as the, the common connectivity platform, uh, whether it's at home or uh, around. And, and there's different ways of connecting. So, so generally your router would have built-in Wi-Fi capabilities. But as soon as you start going with higher speeds, you start looking at a few hundred megabits per second, you've got to create a mesh network. Mm. And you have different ways of getting that mesh in. You can have a wireless mesh. Uh, or what OpenServe offers now is fiber to the room. So mm. it gives you the ability to have one gigabits per second mm. in each room. Mm. And, and that is a, a meshed network across your house giving you that, that, that high speed uh, Wi-Fi. And as soon as you go public Wi-Fi, you get a lot of interference. You mm. know, depending if you've got a very dense vegetation area, you will lose some of the absorption uh, in the trees. So, but there are, you know, I've, I've seen in this week, uh, one of the companies advertising what they refer to as super Wi-Fi. So it is an antenna that uh, takes Wi-Fi up to three kilometers. And I never knew that was possible until very recently. But uh, although it's on the 2.4 gig band, it is still usable Wi-Fi. And you won't get the latency that, uh, that you were talking about, mm. but it is usable mm. Wi-Fi in areas where, you know, you've got a big campus and you want to connect. Uh, a harbor is a good example. You want mm. all devices mm. connected by a single Wi-Fi. Um, that is where super Wi-Fi becomes uh, a technology to use. Fascinating. Uh, and in that context, can I ask you to look into your crystal ball and tell me what you expect uh, this landscape to look like in five years' time? Mm -hmm. So I think I, I spoke a little bit about wearables. Uh, I, I think in, in the very near future, you're going to see uh, a lot of the telcos moving into management of platforms, uh, management of ecosystems, rather than just a normal telco service. Mm. I think internet connectivity will be a commodity. So uh, that, that would happen. I think you're going to start seeing a lot of wearables. You're going to start seeing technology being on you uh, all the time. You're going to start seeing the agriculture sector change. Uh, as OpenSir, what we're driving very hard is school connectivity mm -hmm. because we believe that digital literacy is very important. Uh, E-education, e-agriculture, uh, e-transport. So, so you will see that evolving and I think five years might be too long. In the next two or three years, that is a reality. And if you, know, if you just look at the population in Africa, we have the, uh, the youngest population in the world. And in the next five years, over 70% of Africans are going to be under the age of 30. The rest of the world is going to have an aging problem. 
and those are the people we need to educate. We need to get uh, onto uh, technology to take us forward. And I think this continent needs it the most for mm. uh, to, to boost the economy, to boost uh, literacy. And can you imagine having access to e-health where you sit in the most remote part of Africa and you can, you can consult with the best doctor in the world? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so that is what technology will do for us in the very near, fu the very near future. That's fascinating, a word I keep using. And I'm going to use one more time. Thank you for a fascinating conversation, Sunil. Thank you, Arthur. My pleasure.